you mentioned that your report that uh, UN mission for human rights um, has taken active for, uh, has taken actions some activities are in order to improve the situation with uh, human rights are in the occupied territories what exactly you have done um, well yes as you've uh, rightly pointed out we have I've just launched our 17th quarterly public report that covers the period from the 16th of November 2016 to the 15th of February 2017. Um, the Human Rights Monitoring Mission in Ukraine, we've been here now for over three years, uh, works on both sides of the contact line in the, directly in the conflict-affected area. Uh, we um, work day in, day out, interviewing victims and witnesses of violations of international human rights law and inter international humanitarian law. And then we um, verify this information, document it, advocate with um, relevant authorities, um, refer cases to humanitarian organizations, and undertake um, interventions and then issue these public reports. Why are these concerns raised uh, after these meetings that are in this report? So uh, the, the, the conflict-related um, sexual violence report that we did covers a period from um, April 2014 until February 2017. So it's looking at the whole um, time frame of the actual of the armed conflict and so the recent visits that we undertook to um, places where people were detained were not directly linked to this report. Um, conflict related sexual violence is part of gender based violence. Conflict related sexual violence is um, not only about violence that is um, acted against women, it is also about violence um, which um, perpetrators commit against men uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, the issue is that it's obviously in the scope of a conflict, both in the time frame, in the location, the geography, and again, as I said, we particularly focused on people who have been detained and were in detention and then faced um, sexual violence during the conflict. Also, the report uh, provides a very important figure that uh, you have the the, 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 data, the documented data of uh, 23 deaths, uh, deaths all 23 persons, civilians, casualties within this period under monitoring. Uh, how you document, which uh, deaths you document, uh, in, in which way, how this figure emerged? So um, we have been consistently documenting um, civilian casualties mm -hmm. uh, that have taken place, uh, occurred um, during the conflict. When we talk about civilian casualties, it's clearly both people who have died and people who have been injured. Uh, we give an estimated um, figure of a total figure um, for these civilian casualties and the figure you're referring to the um, 23 civilian deaths during the last uh, the time frame of this report um, came about because of shelling. Mm -hmm. Again, on both sides of the contact line. And um, there was a particularly critical uh, moment during the spike in hostilities between the 28th of January and the 5th of February around uh, the triangle of Avdiivka, Yasunovata uh, mm -hmm. and Donetsk Airport where we saw a high um, number of uh, civilian casualties. We make the point in the report that um, while this is actually a decrease in um, the number of civilian casualties since our last reporting period, the three months prior to November the 15th, it is actually an increase um, in the number of civilian casualties in comparison to one year ago. And also the majority of those um, individuals who um, were killed, um, some 12, um, were mostly um, due to shelling. Uh, with regard to your question about how we gather the information, we speak to, we go to the sites where um, a casualty, civilian casualty has unfortunately occurred. We talk to either if the either if everyone, people, they're injured, we talk to individuals, we talk to witnesses, we go to the morgues mm -hmm. if necessary, hospitals, we cross-reference um, with law enforcement bodies. So we really try to verify from a, a number of different sources um, the information that we have. 
and um, we also work very closely with mm -hmm. other international partners on this issue, including the mm -hmm. OSC Special Monitoring Mission. 17 reports. What dynamic do you observe in terms of human rights protection? Don't you see the, the freezing of the situation or maybe improvements or maybe regress instead backlash, setback? What do you observe? Well, I think um, uh, what, what we've seen is that um, the conflict result has, has led to some systemic um, human rights violations that were here in Ukraine before the conflict even started becoming more acute. I've mentioned already one, um, the use and practice um, while people are in detention of ill treatment and torture. That's one very specific. But we have also seen um, that there has been an openness and willingness to address um, some very um, specific uh, violations. And I think um, what's important is that there's also legislation being put in place, particularly um, around the judicial reform that's also um, coming into place, that's absolutely key for questions when it comes to accountability um, um, for crimes that have taken place before the conflict and also obviously uh, in relation uh, to the conflict. So it, it varies, um, but I think what's um, essential um, in any country is that if there's an openness and a willingness um, of a state to actually discuss, address, and try to make efforts um, to meet its human rights obligations. And I think that's what we see here. Mm -hmm.